everyone in this video we will discuss about bronchiectasis now what is bronchiectasis bronchiectasis is a disorder in which there is dilatation of the bronchi and the bronchioles this is due to destruction of the smooth muscle and elastic tissue by some chronic necrotizing infections and this will lead to permanent dilation of the bronchi and the bronchioles now bronchiectasis is not a specific disease but it is a consequence of another disease process so another disease process uh, can lead to obstruction and can lead to infection and this will further destroy the smooth muscle and the elastic tissue now what are the conditions in which bronchiectasis can be seen so the conditions associated are congenital conditions such as your very important cystic fibrosis we will discuss why in cystic fibrosis bronchiectasis is seen primary ciliary dyskinesia then certain infections such as some necrotizing pneumonia which can be caused by bacteria uh, viruses or fungi then bronchial obstruction can further cause bronchiectasis this bronchial obstruction can be due to any foreign body tumor or in any case in which there is mucus impaction M many cases are idiopathic also there are certain other diseases which are associated with bronchiectasis such as rheumatoid arthritis sle inflammatory bowel disease after post transplantation so these are the other diseases which are also associated with the bronchiectasis now going to the pathogenesis so if we discuss the pathogenesis there are two main factors here so there are two main factors are the obstruction and the infection so firstly what will happen is there will be bronchial obstruction now whenever there is bronchial obstruction the normal clearing mechanisms are impaired the normal mucus clearing mechanism are impaired that will lead to pooling of secretion over that particular area and whenever there is stasis of secretions this can further cause secondary infection and inflammation now this secondary infection and inflammation can cause destruction of your smooth muscle of the bronchi and the elastic tissue of the bronchi which can lead to the dilation of the permanent dilation of the bronchi and the bronchioles known as bronchiectasis now we will see the pathogenesis associated with each and every disease so how cystic fibrosis is associated with bronchiectasis now what happens in cystic fibrosis there is a primary defect in the iron transport now because of the iron transport there is defective mucociliary action the mucociliary action is defective and there is airway obstruction also so there is thick viscous secretions which are present now whenever there is thick viscous secretions present further there will be infections and damage to the airway walls the main thing here is there is defective ciliary action then second is your primary ciliary dyskinesia now primary ciliary dyskinesia in this there is defect in some ciliary motor proteins therefore there is again retention of the secretion and in recurrent infections now there is another disease which is associated uh, which is a ciliary uh, disorder that is your cartagenous syndrome now this cartagenous syndrome is a actually is a autosomal recessive disorder in which there is triad of situs inversus chronic sinusitis and bronchiectasis so bronchiectasis uh, because of the ciliary motor protein defect present in the cartagenous syndrome bronchiectasis is there also recurrent infection in the sinuses there is chronic sinusitis there is a problem in cell motility also in the cartagenous syndrome therefore leading to the situs inversus uh, the defective cell motility is there during the embryogenesis also these males are Uh, tend to be infertile also because of the sperm dismotility so it is a uh, it has a motility disorder in the body other diseases which are associated with bronchiectasis is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis now this is a hypersensitivity reaction to the aspergillus fumigators here there is a collection of eosinophils because it is a eo, uh, allergic reaction so eosinophils now these eosinophils will uh, cause airway inflammation and therefore will lead to the pathogen uh, main uh, play the role in the pathogenesis 
now going to the morphology we discussed about the pathogenesis and the pathogenesis main thing is the obstruction and subsequent infection due to that now second uh, we'll go to the morphology morphology firstly grossly how the uh, lungs are affected here the mostly it is affecting the lower lobes of the lungs and also more severe in very distal part of the bronchi and the bronchioles most severe is in the distal part here the airways are dilated they can be up to four times the normal size and if you see this is the gross picture this is the pleural surface if you see you can see grossly also normally you cannot see the from the pleural surface you cannot see the bronchi or the bronchioles but here you can make out that this is the bronchi and the bronchioles you can see the markings okay so they are very visible from the pleural surface also because of marked dilation of the bronchioles also if you see the also if you see there is mucopurulin secretions which are present you can see the characteristic white appearance the white appearance is of the mucopurulin secretions which are present so characteristically the bronchi and the bronchioles are very dilated so that they can almost be followed up to the pleural surface and if you cut the section okay you do a cut section then what will we will see you will see many dilated bronchi which are cystic and are filled with mucopurulin secretion now going to the microscopy if you go to the histology it will always depend upon the chronicity of the disease the activity of the disease now if you go to the mainly full blown active case okay in active case you will see very intense inflammation you will see intense acute inflammation chronic inflammation within the walls of the bronchi and the bronchioles also areas of ulceration can be seen the lining epithelium can be ulcerated and because of this chronic irritation squamous metaplasia can also be seen in this this is mainly the picture of your a uh, very full blown disease okay but if you go to a disease which is chronic here in chronicity always in chronic you will always find fibrosis so there is fibrosis of the bronchi on the bronchiolar walls there is peribronchiolar fibrosis which is seen in your chronic diseases so here in the histological picture the low power you can see so much dilated bronchioles okay you can see this so, so much dilated and if you go to the high power you can see how much the intense this is the full blown uh, active case so you can see how much the inflammatory cells are there there are marked dense inflammation by the neutrophils also the lining epithelium here is just disrupted over here so this is the picture seen in the bronchiectasis other things which you can see the organisms on special stains can be seen the organisms such as staph strept nemo enteric organism these are involved in the children hemophilus influenzae and pseudomonas aerogenesa can be also be seen fungal hyphae in the case of aspergillosis can also be seen so this is the uh microscopic picture now going to the clinical picture we will briefly discuss the clinical picture so here the symptoms of the person are very episodic and whenever the person will get upper respiratory tract infection the symptoms can be precipitated the main symptom are severe persistent cough okay the person will have a, per, a persistent cough with expectoration of the foul smelling sputum this paroxysms of the cough are mostly frequent on morning because of the change in position lead to drainage okay so therefore uh, the there will be cough other things can be person can complain of dyspnea or orthopnea so these are the some clinical picture so this was all about the bronchiectasis if you have any query you can ask in the comment box do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like these videos thanks for watching